Hey, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the last question of the 2013 AP Microeconomics FRQ section. In this question we're going to be asked about externalities, both positive and negative. So let's go ahead and get started. Question 3 states, for special occasions some people purchase and set off fireworks in their backyards. Assume the market for fireworks is perfectly competitive. First we want to draw a correctly labeled graph of the market for fireworks and show the market equilibrium price and quantity. So what we know is that equilibrium is where supply equals demand and we want to find the overall equilibrium for the market which is going to be right here where supply equals demand and we're going to label those as QE and PE. Simple enough. That's part A. Let's look at part B. Assume that the noise from the fireworks disturbs all the neighbors. On your graph in part A, show each of the following. Marginal social cost, marginal social benefit, and deadweight loss. So this is asking you about the case in which we have a negative externality. Because this noise is incurring an additional cost to society. If it were a positive externality, then it would be something good. But in this case, Disturbs usually mean something bad, so this is a negative externality. And what this means is that you're going to have a marginal social cost that is greater than your marginal private cost, right? And so let's think about this original supply and demand. This supply is also synonymous with the marginal private cost to people in the equilibrium market, and this demand curve is also equal to the marginal social benefit because this is showing us how much society benefits from a certain amount of fireworks and the degree in which they can you know go to the right and go towards a certain quantity before they no longer derive as much of a benefit so as you can see there's a diminishing return um, once it reaches a certain point whereas in the very beginning of the marginal social benefit aka the demand curve each successive quantity leads to a very high amount of, uh, of overall benefit. So this is your marginal private cost, and we know that there is going to be a marginal social cost that's higher than the private cost because we have a negative externality. If it were a positive externality, then the marginal private cost would be uh, greater than, than the marginal social cost, and that makes sense because in a positive externality situation, you would be faced with a circumstance in which this externality is actually beneficial to society. So this is going to be your marginal social cost. So another way to think about this cost is it's really the true cost to society when you include all the external costs involved. So you're including noise essentially here. So noise is being included in this. And here we were just thinking about the typical consumer himself and, and his, his own private costs. So things like maybe the raw materials, um, but not really considering the, the influence of the fireworks on other people and society as a whole. And therefore, our optimal point would be QE, PE. So as we solved in part one, PE is equal to P QE is the overall equilibrium for the market. However, we know that the actual optimal point for society is where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. So we need to look at where marginal social costs intersects marginal social benefit. And that happens at this point right here. So let's go ahead and label that point A. So if we label that point A uh, and we go ahead and label this point B, I'm going to go ahead and draw this upwards to see the difference between the marginal social cost and the marginal private benefit. And that will show me the overall deadweight loss as well incurred. Okay, so we know that the socially optimal point would have been the place where marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost, which happens at A. We know that the equilibrium happened at B. And so this final point C, this difference, is essentially the vertical distance essentially is showing you uh, the difference between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost. And therefore, this is a loss incurred to society because of this negative externality. So there's your deadweight loss. 
Okay, so that is pretty much it for part B. We've answered the question of the marginal social costs, the marginal social benefit, and the deadweight loss. So let's go ahead and move on to part C. Okay, so now in part C, we're told that neighbors actually enjoy watching fireworks. So we need to come up with the market equilibrium quantity of the fireworks and see if it's greater than, less than, or equal than the socially optimal quantity. So we know that in this case, because we're dealing with a positive externality, marginal private costs is going to equal marginal social costs. Because we're no longer dealing with a situation in which there's a negative externality, we're dealing with a situation in which the externality is positive externality. So in this case, let's think about the marginal private benefit. Let's just draw a line here and call it the marginal private benefit. And we know that this marginal private benefit is not taking into account this positive externality. And therefore, our actual societal benefit is going to be higher than the marginal private benefit. Okay, so now let's look at what the original market equilibrium is and what the socially uh, market e what the social market equilibrium is. So in this case, we want to look for first where marginal private benefit equals marginal social benefit, which is going to happen right here. And then we want to look at where marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. And actually, this is this is a mistake here. I should actually have set that into marginal so private cost because marginal private benefit should equal marginal private cost. There we go. Great. So looking at that, we can compare the two, and we see that the market equilibrium quantity of fireworks is going to be less than the equilibrium for the socially optimal quantity. And that's because if you were to look at this and call this Q2 versus Q1, we're moving backwards, and therefore it's less. Now, let's think about the second part. In this case, if the government bans fireworks, will the deadweight loss increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Well, let's first think about what this deadweight loss would be. In this case, because we're not going to this optimal, because since we don't understand this positive externality on the private side, we are essentially incurring a difference here, which is going to be a deadweight loss. So this is the fact that we are not acknowledging this positive externality in our output, and therefore this is your deadweight loss. And therefore deadweight loss would increase if we were to ban fireworks because in the case in which we ban fireworks that deadweight loss would become very apparent and so deadweight loss would overall go up. And that's pretty much it in terms of question number three. We've walked through parts A, B, and C and gone over a situation where we had a uh, negative externality and we've also gone through this situation which we have a positive externality. So if you need any more help in AP Microeconomics, feel free to check out LearnRater for hundreds of AP Microeconomics practice questions. That's it for me. Uh, feel free to check out our other videos for other FRQ sol sol solutions, and I'll see you guys next time.